opportunity for the public to speak in the public comment section. And the rules are, the council rules are that you are allowed to speak on any topic for three minutes. Um, we, we ask that you wrap up at three minutes. We, you don't get tasered if you happen to wander over a little bit, but please don't start another chapter if that's possible. Uh, and um, to that end, oh, also I should let you know that the council, the, the, when you speak to the, uh, the council, the council is actually constrained from speaking back uh, and participating in a conversation or a dialogue, which trust me is a good thing. And um, so if any question that you ask will just stand as a rhetorical question because it won't be able to be res responded to at least in, in public session. And we'll start off with, um, with Bernice Drumbella. Is that correct, Bernice? Did I pronounce your last name correctly? And also, when you step up, identify yourself and pronounce and correct your name pronunciation when I blow it and uh, give us your address. Good evening. I am Bernice Drumheller, president of uh, the National Alliance on Mental Illness of Western Mass. Um, I'm from Agua. Our office is in Aguam uh, on Springfield Street in Aguam. And I'd like to thank the mayor, Markowitz, city council, and the public for this important proclamation of Mental Health Awareness Week. This is a great testimony. Mental illness affects everyone. Nearly 60 million Americans experience a mental health condition every year, regardless of race, age, religion, or economic status. Mental illness impacts the lives of at least one in four adults and one in 10 children across the United States. Because mental health illness or mental illness devastates the lives of so many Americans, NAMI works every day to save every life. NAMI is the voice on mental illness. NAMI is the National Alliance on Mental Illness, the largest grassroots mental health organization dedicated to building better lives for the millions of Americans affected by mental illness. NAMI advocates for access to services, treatment, supports, and research, and is steadfast in its commitment to raise awareness and build a community for hope for all those in need. National Alliance on Mental Illness of Western Mass is a nonprofit organization and the largest affiliate in Massachusetts, serving Hamden, Hampshire, and Franklin counties. NAMI Western Mass operates on donations only and offers no cost support to groups, to individuals and families, education and training programs, and peer advocacy. Our office is located in Aguam and is open Monday through Thursday from 8.30 to 4.30 p.m. Our two largest fundraisers are the Walkathon in May and the Iris Project in September and October. The annual Iris Project was started to bring visibility and educate people about mental illness. Our mission is dedicated to helping to improve the quality of life for individuals and families, those affected by mental illness through support, education, and advocacy. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Beth Mannion, please. Beth Mannion, live in Holyoke, Massachusetts. My name is Beth Mannion, and I'd like to begin by telling you about my involvement with NAMI. I am on the board of directors of the National Alliance on Mental Illness of Western Massachusetts. I'm a presenter for In Our Own Voice, which is NAMI's public speaking program. I've been a member of various committees for events such as our Walkathon fundraiser, and I volunteer at the NAMI office several hours a week. Yet just a few years ago, all of this might have been impossible for me because I, like one in four Americans, have a mental illness. There was a time when I could barely get out of bed 
to get a glass of water or brush my teeth, much less attend a committee meeting at NAMI. I turned away from my friends and family, and eventually I was no longer able to work as a teacher. Yet I am convinced that recovery is possible, recovery is real, and recovery happens. This month, I will be returning to work for the first time in five years as a substitute teacher in Northampton. <coughs> Good mental health care, which I am fortunate enough to have access to, has been key to my recovery. NAMI has also been an important part of this process as well. At NAMI, I have found friendship, support, encouragement, and inspiration. My volunteer work brought much needed structure to my life during difficult times, and my current involvement has given me a renewed sense of purpose and accomplishment. During Mental Health Awareness Week, look around you. You will see the many faces of mental illness, and you will see the many stages of recovery. You may see a mentally ill person on a sidewalk in Northampton, perhaps exhibiting behaviors that are strange or even scary. Yet someone else with mental illness in Northampton may be picking up the kids at soccer practice after work. In any case, these are people seeking to live with dignity in the face of the tremendous challenges of mental illness. Let us move forward as a community to raise awareness about the need for quality mental health care and to fight the stigma surrounding mental illness, which is an illness like any other. Thank you. Thank you very much, Beth. Uh, Ella Smolensky, <coughs> please. Good evening, Mayor Narkowitz, City Council, and the public. Before you will find an iris, a donation has been made in your honor to the National Alliance of Mental Illness of Western Mass. Family to Family is a free 12-week course for family caregivers of individuals living with severe mental illness that discusses the clinical treatment of these illnesses and teaches the knowledge and skills that family members need to cope more effectively. I am a teacher for NAMI. It is important that we all realize that mental illness is not a character flaw. It is an illness just like diabetes, heart disease, and can be treated effectively. The National Alliance for Mental Illness of Western Mass is currently providing a free family to family course with space that has been generously provided by the Cooley Dickinson Hospital. This class is fully enrolled with a waiting list for the next class. Currently, there are 17 of these courses taking place in Massachusetts. Over 300,000 have graduated from the National Alliance on Mental Illness Family to Family course. This course has measured outcomes, and it has been proven that families that take this course are better equipped to co effectively cope with mental illness and understand it. Our heartfelt thanks to Cooley Dickinson and to the following, to you, for issuing this proclamation tonight, Amir Narkowitz, to Councilor Jesse Adams, who made the announcement about the Family to Family course, to Northampton Community Television, who televised educational materials to help eliminate stigma and posted the course, to the Daily Hampshire Gazette, which if you look in the healthcare section, you'll find support groups listed, and who also provided information about the Family to Family course. Please visit www.nami.org to learn more about mental illness. NAMI says, where there is help, there is hope, and we're not alone in this fight. Thank you. Thank you, Ella. Um, Margaret Mahoney, please. Hi, my name is Maggie Mahoney. I'm a junior at Northampton High School and a co-captain on the cross-country team. I live at 77 Emerson Way. And the issue of shared space in Northampton for runners, walkers, dogs, and their owners is one that deserves immediate attention. The guest column in the Gazette by Reverend Bullet Jonas detailing the serious injuries she suffered after an interaction with an unleashed dog should serve as a clarion call to develop a workable solution to this problem. Unfortunately, interactions such as these are a frequent hazard for Northampton High's cross-country team. Nearly every, every member of the team has been jumped on or tripped up by a dog while running in the same area mentioned in the column. Furthermore, every member of the team has stepped in it while training there. Northampton and Smith College both have leash laws that fall under Massachusetts general laws regarding dogs, which state that dogs must be leashed and dog owners must clean up after their pets. We ask that you adhere to the request outlined in Reverend Bullet Jonas's letter and address this issue for the safety and well-being of all Northampton residents. 
Sincerely, members of the Northampton High Cross Country Team and their families. And I've given copies to the clerk for the City Council and will give one to Mayor Narkowitz. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maggie. Uh, Meredith O'Leary, please. Good evening, Councillors. I'm Meredith O'Leary. I work for the Health Department here in the City of Northampton. I'd like to take a moment to use this platform to tell everybody who might be watching this evening about our um, health, uh, excuse me, our free vaccine, flu vaccine clinic that we're having tomorrow. It's tomorrow, Friday, October 4th, from 10 to 12, and it's going to be at the Northampton Senior Center at 67 Con Street. Okay, and all the public is welcome. You don't need any co-payments or insurance. It's a free clinic. And the more that we immunize, the less chance that there will be an outbreak or a pandemic. So please get your flu vaccine. Secondly, um, I noticed on, the, on tonight's agenda that there is an ordinance, a medical marijuana ordinance that's being put forth, draft, I'm sure. Um, I'd like to take an opportunity at this point to ask that the health department or a Board of Health member take part in future conversations. Um, I think it's important. It's the State Department of Public Health that wrote the regulations around medical marijuana. And I feel like I've been sitting at the tables across the state for, gosh, almost a year now, taking part in conversations about the law and looking at the public health perspective with our lens on. And I would hate to see any kind of ordinance be passed through without having a representative there from the health department. So I'd just like to say that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Patrick Bowen, please. Good evening, councillors, mayor, fellow citizens. I'm Patrick Bona from 95 Straw Avenue in Florence. I'll start with, I want to thank the councillors for their consideration of my comments at the meeting two meetings ago, about a month back, on food trucks. Listen to the debate online. And I also want to thank NC NCTV for videotaping all these meetings. It gives me the opportunity to listen to all the discussions, even if I can't stay for the whole meeting. I wanted to share an additional idea I had for the downtown area based on discussions I heard at the last meeting. And th th there seems to be a concern that was voiced by many of the councillors about the long term economic viability of the downtown area in face of online competition. And so, one idea that I've heard to strengthen that comes from Frederick, Maryland, which is a similar sized town to Northampton. It's about 60,000 population versus Northampton, so roughly 30,000. And similarly, there's a pre-World War II downtown surrounded by, or in near competition to many big box stores. It's essentially if you had all the big box stores in Hadley immediately across the river instead of a little bit farther down Route 9. And one of the ways they've been successful in driving business to the downtown is, is with an event they call First Saturday, which I provided you a newspaper article about the event and a study that they, that they commissioned on the success of the event. Basically, they have an event that occurs at the same day of the month every month, and that's how most people know about it. Is they just know to go downtown that day because it's going to be fun. And it drives $450,000 of revenue into the downtown every time it happens based on the studies they performed. And it's fairly straightforward to pull off. They have different themes for each month. So for October in the downtown, you can paint your own pumpkin, scarecrow decorating contest, or free hot cider. In December, they had a promotion that if you bought, I think it was $10 or more at three different stores, you could go to the Chamber of Commerce at the end and pick a free gift, which was typically a gift card to the downtown. And in November, they had things like carriage rides, food and wine tastings, and other exhibits. And so the logistics of pulling this off aren't amazingly complicated. But the results have been that it's a consistent event that draws people downtown, makes them aware of all the businesses that are there, and, have, and encourages them to come back even when this event isn't happening. So I'd like the city council to consider this event, or I put my email on the front page of that. If you have any questions, if there's a better venue to bring this to, I'd be happy to hear about it. And I separately want to say, 
thank you to the mayor and the council for recognizing Mental Health Awareness Week. I too know many people who are struggling or have successfully helped manage their mental health, but there's a tremendous stigma associated with it, and so I appreciate Northampton recognizing that. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Um, that's all we have signed up for. Um, but is there anyone who would wish to speak now? Uh, okay. Thank you. We will, I'm going to ask the clerk to call the roll and we'll convene the regular meeting. Councilor Adams? Here. Councilor Carney? Present. Councilor Dwight? Here. Councilor Lavarge? Present. Councilor Murphy? Here. 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 Okay. Welcome. We have excuses from uh, Councilor Owen Freeman Daniels and Councilor um, Spector. We won't be here this evening. So, um, what are we up to? First, we got the oh communications from the mayor, and the mayor happens coincidentally to happen to have a communication which actually you heard referred to frequently in the in the public comment. Your Honor. Good evening. Uh, uh, members of the City Council, uh, I do have a proclamation uh, to issue this evening, and I want to acknowledge again our guests that are here this evening uh, from, from NAMI, Beth, uh, and Bernice, who spoke so eloquently during the public comment. And I also want to acknowledge uh, Florence resident Ella Smolinski, who um, brought this issue forward to the mayor's office and helped us uh, put this proclamation together. So this is a proclamation that I'm issuing uh, it's entitled Mental Illness Awareness Week, October 6th through the 13th of 2013. Whereas serious mental illnesses such as major depression, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, obsessive compulsive disorder, severe anxiety disorders, borderline personality disorder, and post-traumatic stress disorders affect one in every four people annually. And whereas serious mental illness is a highly treatable medical illness of the brain, posing the same concerns as cancer, heart disease, diabetes, and other illnesses, and whereas scientific research is constantly working toward breakthroughs in the understanding of mental illness, resulting in more effective treatments to allow people to reclaim full and productive lives, and whereas misunderstandings exist about mental illness and social culture often wrongly imposes a stigma on mental illness, and whereas every citizen and community can make a difference in helping to improve the lives of individuals and families affected by mental illness. Now, therefore, I, David J. Narkowitz, Mayor of the City of Northampton, do hereby proclaim the week of October 6th through the 13th, 2013, as Mental Illness Awareness Week in the City of Northampton to increase public awareness of mental illness and to promote treatment and recovery. In witness whereof, I have set my hand and affixed the seal of the City of Northampton, David Jane Arkwitz, Mayor. And I'd uh, be happy to present this to, uh, to our guests this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Th and and um, now we can actually speak, and I don't know if there are any counselors who want to speak to this. I, I'm going to take advantage of my position as the presiding officer to speak first. But, um, and uh, the... Um, I'm very grateful for the opportunity to vote on this, or not to vote on it, but to recognize it, because um, some of the issues that you presented have come up frequently in the, in the context of our discussions of how we treat public space, how we help with issues relative to homelessness, how we help with issues. Uh, I, it actually informs every aspect of our lives here in the community, and reminding people constantly, this is the community. These are not people with mental illness are not separate from the community. They are part of it. And Northampton knows better than many other communities throughout the country we have. Um, and, and I think we even brag on that to some extent, our, our level of understanding and, com and, and mutual compassion. Sometimes we fall short. And I appreciate the opportunity to be reminded on occasion. Uh, I think it's in our best interest. And I know uh, Councilor Labarge wants to speak to this as well as Councilor Adams. Um, I am very proud of this proclamation. And it was an honor to meet the two on the board and the president and Ella. I think it's great that we're doing something like this because I think the language in here is very, very valuable. And we're looking at it educating the public. 
And that's where the quality is of the educating the public. So I want to thank you all and your organization and such a great job that you're doing with people with mental illness. Thank you. Councilor Adams. <coughs> um, NAMI does many wonderful things. Amongst some of the things they do, one of the things is um, training police officers, including um, Northampton police officers, and they take that training and, and utilize what they've learned throughout the course of their duty. And um, that's extremely valuable to have a, a police department that's, that's first in that. Not all police departments are, but our, our <coughs> police department is, is, um, is well learned in that respect, and it's, it's through NAMI, and that's very valuable. Um, also, I'd like to thank Ms. Smolensky. She gave me information on mental health courts, which is something I think the state should aspire to, to have. And um, with education and access to services and funding, um, people with mental health issues will have a, a quality and, and um, active, productive life, and we need to aspire towards that. Thank you. Thank you all again. Thank you. Um, next up, let's see, uh, Al, Al Williams is here, right? Oh, I'm sorry, the one-minute announcements, and then we'll, then we'll get Al to come here. Um, the, actually, why don't I start with the, uh, on file in the City Council Office, the environmental notification form, the Mass DOT Dumping Ground Remediation Project at 155 Locust Street, Northampton, uh, facility number 21. Uh, the environmental notification form is tie and bond, incorporated hospitality north Atwood Drive project, project number 17-1363-4-1. Um, what did I just announce? <laughs> is this a hearing? No, they're in there. Okay, it's just so that, that everyone understands that this is on file, so <coughs> get in line. Um, any other one minute announcements? Consultation. Yeah, if anybody's looking for something that's really fun to do tomorrow night, the Northampton High School football team has its second home game tomorrow. They play Belchertown, 7 o'clock, $5 for adults, $3 for students. It's always fun. Uh, Councilor Carney. Yes. And also, folks may uh, want to know of a fun event and educational event this Saturday. Uh, uh, sponsored by the Northampton Dollars for Scholars, the eighth annual Local Lore and Legends Scavenger Hunt, uh, where folks may show what you know and learn what you don't. And uh, you should know that there is a uh, city council team that will participate. Um, I'm the president of our city council team, <laughs> the captain, I guess. And uh, it, joining me will be the crew of Marianne Labarge, Councillor Labarge, Councillor Adams, Councillor Dwight. So please join us. This is a really um, a great event that raises a lot of money for scholarships for local students. And um, I believe you can still show up and, and join in, get a team of three of your friends or family and uh, join us for a great time. That would be at the depot, the Northampton train depot on Saturday. I think folks should show up there at 8.40 or so for a 9 a.m. shotgun start. Uh, and it looks like it's a less than two mile walking course where again, you'll be given instructions and I challenge you to come and beat us, please. <laughs> Yeah. Won't well, be too hard. <laughs> you know, where else would you have the opportunity? Yeah, take, take an opportunity to embarrass your city councilors. <laughs> okay. Any other one-minute announcements? Okay. Here we go. Al Williams is here from Northampton Community Television to explain what the hell those things are sitting in the corner of the room. How are y'all? I'm Al Williams. I'm the director of Northampton Community Television. And what you're seeing behind me over my left shoulder we can get a shot of that on one of our cameras, is the first of our municipal camera installations that we're going to be putting up in various locations around the city. The goal here is to be able to provide some coverage of virtually every committee meeting that happens in the city. Um, we've been beta testing this unit in here. 
Um, it's a camera, a microphone that records on SD cards and a set of uh, pretty easy to follow instructions about how to operate it. There are rechargeable batteries um, that power the microphone that's sitting on top of that camera that sit in a charger on that camera as well. So you'll see these appear in uh, DPW room, um, city hall hearing room, I believe the senior center, and I think JFK are the locations that, that these will all be installed in. Um, it will be, you know, committees will need to run these cameras themselves. That's why instructions are on there. Um, NCTV staff will pick up the footage once those meetings are complete. We're asking committee members to send us an email to let us know that they were used. Um, and we'll turn around that footage and it'll be available on our websites, um, on television, etc. Um, it's not going to be, you know, the best quality picture and sound, but you will have some sort of documentation about what happened. That's our goal here is really to try to retain as much information as we can as efficiently as possible. Um, we'll have NCTV staff go and be able to appear in front of these committees if there's any difficulty in terms of setting them up. Um, other things to note, we'll probably be sending around some materials to those committees for circulation. We could probably get something to Mary Madura about that uh, regarding um, being aware that you're on camera, that a microphone is recording uh, you. You may have seen a recent story about Holyoke City Councilors um, that there was some embarrassment about regarding um, them not knowing microphones were, were on. Um, if you have any questions about any of that, please feel free to, to be in touch. We hope to have all of them installed for uh, after the election by then, certainly. Um, I, pre I appreciate you giving us the uh Actually, there's cautionary tales all around us, East Hampton, Holyoke, uh, about hot mics and on other things. Um, it should also be noted that this is part of a push. Uh, Al has been great about this because Mass General Law allows uh, recorded um, video or audio to serve as, uh, as minutes of meetings. And they're more comprehensive, of course, than written minutes and the idea is to promote um, an opportunity for citizens to see the full breadth, and this came up during the course of a uh, charter discussion, of course, the full breadth of a meeting and the discussion involved in the meeting, the tenor of the meeting, um, often those things are not reflected in written minutes. Here you'll get not necessarily a comprehensive experience, it's not it's not going to be in 3D and, and it's surround sound, but the, uh, it's shot wide, the sound's going to be, you're going to, does it pick up, I'm assuming it picks up all the ambient sound, so if somebody's having a coughing fit, that may take over, so. It does. There are and some yeah. challenges. Right, there are some challenges. Um, you know, we've, we've looked at the footage and, and recorded a, couple, a number of meetings with them, and we feel like it's, you know, there's information there to be, that, that is effective, that you can translate. Um, I'd also note on October 19th, we're having our annual events and meeting at Northampton Community Television. It starts at 4.30. Um, there'll be food. And uh, we'll be giving our annual report. Immediately following that will be the second installation of what we're calling Cinema Northampton. So we're doing free public film screenings. So 6.30 p.m. on the field at the high school immediately after our annual event will be Ghostbusters for free <laughs> um, outside. So you're all invited to that as well. Perfect. Yeah. Any questions for uh, Al Williams? Thank you. Thanks. Thanks a lot. And good luck in uh, Hoyoke there. Nice. <laughs> Could you take a, a second to recognize the mayor's tie? Are we, are we acknowledging the mayor's tie? Well, uh, sure. <laughs> we get NCTV to zoom right in on that, baby. <laughs> I, I believe you're commemorating the American Red Sox status as. Uh, Division <laughs> champions, congratulations. It may be, I think he's, we don't want to jinx him, I don't think. Okay, now, next on the agenda is an application for uh, Go Green Cab and Transportation Company. This is the fourth vehicle. And uh, we also have another application as well, but that's from a different cab company. So do you guys want to tape these separately? Or do you? Yes, yeah, separately. Separately. Two different. Okay. Uh, the owner from Go Green is here. Uh, do councilors have any questions? Councilor Tacey. Yeah. Um, this is the fourth vehicle. You have four on the road. Justin, you want to come up and step up to the podium here? And, and, and Brian's here. And Brian's here. Justin and Brian are the owners of Go Green Capsa. So you have four vehicles. <clears throat> 
Do you have a comp policy? A what? A workman's comp policy? We do not. It's um, like most of the local taxi companies, it's all independent contractors. So they cover their own workman's comp. And you have <coughs> their comp on file? We, we do have independent contractor contracts with them that does list all the rules about workers' comp and all that. But we do not have any official paperwork about their workman's comp, no. That's sort of on their own to cover as part of the independent contractor. <clears throat> I hire a lot of independent contractors that have to carry their own workman's comp policies. Mm -hmm. I just, I'm just curious. Um, Brian, do you want to handle that? We've never, asked, answer? We've, we've never really asked them to, to see their policy. We advised them when we hired them that it's their responsibility to obtain one and cover one. If they choose not to, it's on their own uh, recognizance so that if they're injured on the job, they understand that they are responsible for their own, uh, albeit our insurance does cover an accident and we'll cover them to a certain degree. But after that, if they're gonna miss time from work, that is something they're choosing to forego on their own choice. But as an employer, the Mass General Law requires you to carry a workman's comp policy. If I have direct employees, that was my understanding. It is something that we can discuss with our insurance agent and other people involved to double check that we're following the laws we as we should. Because yeah, I, I, I see it, both of these applications, they, they, the one has a, a, a comp policy. Um, and I, I would seriously have you like to have you have a look at that. Definitely. There is um, something that we had been in talks for in the future as we progress and grow and get to a better state where we were planning on trying to work out a rebate system to help drivers cover their own workman's comp where if we knew when they did provide us with proof of their workman's comp that we would work out a way of helping them do so. That's something that we're working towards as we grow. And in, in, in that interim, then you would have to you would be responsible to carry a, a comp policy on them okay i will we will look into that I mean, and find out the direct so the it's in your own best interest i'm just mm -hmm. okay yep. council the did you have a question yeah um we've had many of these permits come in and i've never heard of it being questioned about the workman's comp insurance so we do have an attorney I wouldn't know the answer to that. I don't know. I, I don't know if it's mandated under the Master General Law. So it's, it's just not my area. Just check with our attorney. Our attorney, she's down on uh, King Najam, and I can't remember the other partner. If I understand it correctly, it sounds like it's your you're under the impression that because they are independent characters that you're exempt from that, and it sounds like you disagree with that. I don't, I don't know the answer. I really don't. And I think it depends industry to industry is the way I, I was advised. Um, not being a lawyer, um, being new to the country, I may be misinformed. Um, I will to check into that further, but I know through talking through our insurance agent when we first started, our new insurance agent who we have on now, and uh, our lawyers that the, the, work, uh, the workers' comp policy in regards to independent contractors falls on the head of the contractor to obtain. Uh, if the contractor fails to obtain it, they're basically accepting the fact that if they get injured on the job, they are accepting that they are not going to be compensated for time lost and it's their responsibility to ensure their livelihood i must say it is something that we did focus a lot on a year and a half ago when we started the company we did talk to our lawyers did talk to our insurance agent and they told us that the way we were doing it was correct and by the law and i haven't looked back at it since we were also so have a look at it you since. write some checks is that correct no no um as you don't the way the cab industry always works, they get commission off of their fares, so they do all their rides, and then they keep their 40% commission out of the cash that they hand in at night, so they keep their cash daily at the end of their shift. So you issue no 1099s? No. no. Oh, no, no, 1099s? I'm sorry, yes, we do issue 1099s. Well, 1099 yes. generates a WR1. The WR1 is what requires a workman's comp policy. I don't care how you spell it. Okay. I... We'll look I, I don't have a good answer for okay. that. And I, I like, I like to point out this is an application for a license, yep. not not an enterprise, a business or an enterprise. Yep. And that uh, what we are, and in fact, actually, I should also point out this is the most comprehensive application I've ever had, I've ever received for any application for any any vehicle and any just, cabinet. Yeah, I so was just looking out for the cities. What you got? The, the mayor actually just uh, handed me something here. The state uh, 
how does the workers' compensation law define an employee that employs every person in service or another under any contract or hire express or implied oral or written exceptions include but are not limited to seamen, uh, salesmen of real estate or consumer goods who work on commission or buy sell basis, taxi drivers who lease their cabs on a fee basis not related to fares collected and who are not treated as an employee under federal tax law. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, any other questions relative to this license application? Oh. Gentlemen, thank you for your time. We'll accept a motion to approve the license. Make a motion to approve it. And is there a second? Second. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor of authorizing the application for taxi cab license to go green in transportation company, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you for your time, gentlemen. Appreciate that. Um, next up is this is a taxi cab license uh, for uh, Don Lynch, uh, who's the manager of the Mercedes Cab Company, uh, aka or um, Funky Cab. Uh, Don, you here? You want to step up? Uh, Councilors, have any questions on this application? Oh, uh, Councilor Carney. Uh, just I noticed that you're you are a Mercedes cab also mm -hmm. operating out of Provincetown. Yes. And you've been in business there for a number of years, right? Uh, about thirty five, yes. Yeah, I thought so. So is this kind of an expansion of that business? Actually? Yeah, that's correct. Um, we do operate as a separate company, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously we are a DBA and we use resources. Uh, Mercedes cab provides provided startup capital, they provide the vehicles and the owner takes care of a lot of um, the sort of higher level issues, insurance and things like that, so. And any other questions on the? Nope. I'd like to make, make a motion to approve. Okay. There's a motion to approve and second, thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion on this application? All those in favor of authorizing Mercedes Cab Company doing business as Funky Cab, uh, this application, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you all for your time. I appreciate that. Uh, let's see. Approval in minutes. I'll accept the motion for the minutes for the meeting of uh, September 9th. Approve. Second it. Okay. Any discussion on those? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Um, This is a reappointment, uh, reappointment of special police officers for 2014, and um, this is from Captain Conkus. Uh, I respectfully request that the following be reappointed as special police officers for the calendar year of 2014. Jeffrey S. Brown, Mitchell S. Seeky, Jr., Donald Fournier, N. Gaffney Graham, Michael Patnode, Matthew Rice, Brian Rust, Lori Spear, and Andrew Trushaw. It is further requested that these appointments be made prior to the start of the new calendar year so as to ensure these special police officers can continue to carry out their respective duties without interruption. Thank you, uh, Captain Conkus from the Police Department. Um, I'd like to suspend Rule 30. A uh, motion to suspend rules. Is there a second? Second. Uh, this is to for referral to uh, appointments. All those in favor of suspending rules? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, is there a motion to approve? Move to approve. Second. Okay, thank you. Any discussion on these special police officer authorizations? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Opposed? Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> this is from Mayor David J. Narkowitz. Of appointments to committees. Please find attached the appointments and reappointments to city boards, committees, and commissions. Uh, Board of Public Works. Terry Culhane, this will be a reappointment, five Stearns Court, Northampton term to start March 2013 and end March 2016. And also David Shearer, who's uh, all, another reappointment, 160 South Street, Northampton term, the same time, 23rd, March 2013 to March 2016. Um, and then there's also the Planning Board, Dan Felton, 15 Fourth Avenue in Northampton, associate member term to expire March 2017, filling the unexpired term of Carly Youngblood. Um, is I would like to make a motion to um, separate the Board of Public Works. Okay, so, so and you want to okay, you don't need a motion for that. Do your preference is to separate? The yes, okay. please. All right. And I would like um, Terry Cohane suspend Rule 30. 
Okay. So you want to separate the each yes. individual. Yes. Okay. So the motion is to suspend Rule 30, which is referral to appointments. Um, is there a second? Second. second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, do you want to make a motion suspend for approval? Yep. Well, we've suspended rules, so you want to move yes. to approve? Move to approve. Second. Any discussion on Terry Colhane's reappointment to uh, Board of Public Works? All the, yeah, I'll count, Just that he's been terrific, and we're lucky to have him back. Uh, Terry Colhane has been annealed in the fires of public comment, and he has done a lot of the job. Uh, Councilor Casey. I think he's been there about 20 years on the board, um, and he's been more than diligent. I mean, he's never misses a meeting, and he's worked out very, very well. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor of approving Terry Colhane for reappointment, please say aye. 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 Okay. Uh, next, David Shearer. And this is for uh, also for reappointment, as I said, uh, the same term. Suspend Rule 30. You want to move to suspend rules? Is there a second on that? Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, Make Councilor a Chase? Yeah. Do I... you want to put it on the floor first? Sure. A, okay. So there's a motion the, uh, to put the... Um, uh, David Shearer on the floor is reappointment. Second. But having sentence construction problems, Council, and it's seconded by Councilor Adams. And hey, Councilor Tacey, you have the floor. Yeah, I, um, I actually called Dave, David Shearer on his first, uh, when he filled out his application before he was appointed, and I knew then that he was going to work out very, very well on the Board of Public Works, and he has been uh, an outstanding member of the Board of Public Works since he's been there, and he asks a lot of questions that I wouldn't even think of, and um, he's been he is uh, very proactive, and I think he's a, he's a great, he's an asset to the board. Any further discussion on the reappointment? All those in favor of reappointing David Shearer for a term starting March 2013 to March 2016, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Now this is uh, an appointment for Dan Felton uh, to an associate membership on the planning board. Uh, uh, filling the unexpired term of Carla Youngblood. Move to send to appointments and evaluations. Motion to refer to appointments and evaluations. Second. Second. Question. Um, I'm, I'm assuming this that Carla Youngblood is still on the board. She's been promoted kind of to a full member. Is that correct? And so this is to. Yes, uh, I believe you approved that at your last meeting or yes. one of your most recent yeah. meetings. Yes, I appointed her to fill a vacancy and a full membership. So this just fills the associate vacancy she left exactly yeah. thank you all right the motion is to refer all those in favor aye aye aye, aye. any opposed any abstentions okay thank you um this is also from mayor david junark what's this is the appointment of a department head uh i am appointing brian foot as director of the arts council filling the vacancy created by the retirement of robert silman Mr. Foote is currently the administrator in the Office of the Arts Council, and I'm submitting this appointment to the City Council in accordance with Northampton Charter 20-10. I'll accept a motion. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Uh, Mary, do you want to speak to this? Uh, certainly. Um, so as we know, we, we said uh, goodbye to Bob Silman after a long uh, and illustrious career uh, with the City as, uh, as its Arts Director. And, um, and so uh, working with the Arts Council and our HR department, uh, we uh, took a look at the job descriptions, uh, make up uh, the way the work was structured in the Arts Council, and, uh, and sort of reformatted them, revised them a little bit, uh, and, uh, and advertised those positions. Um, I did have a screening committee that consisted of HR personnel, uh, Bob Silman, who was still then the Arts Council Director, um, as well as the Chair of the Arts Council, Betsy Stone, um, and uh, they uh, recommended uh, strongly uh, the appointment of Brian Foote uh, to the newly created director position. Um, and as you may have read in the paper, we sort of created, um, prior to that, uh, uh, Brian did uh, much of the administrative sorts of work. Um, uh, Bob, while he was the director and also did administrative work, he also was sort of the program, had, had a lot of programming experience. Um, <coughs> and of course, he also wore a, a different hat because he also um, uh, ran the Young at Heart 
Orris and had the city receive funding for toward his position. So going forward, um, uh, Brian, uh, the executive director position, will again obviously oversee uh, the department. Will work with the arts council very closely to oversee the grant <laughs> programs and and the administration and promotion and marketing and all those things. Um, and then the new position um, that would be Brian's former position is now more focused on programming. Um, in particular, the the, the two major events uh, for Sundays and trans performance as well as all the other kinds of programming things so um, so I'm really pleased uh, Brian has uh, in the short time he's been working for the Arts Council I've been very impressed with the way he's uh, really dove in and and brought a lot of his passion and experience uh, for the arts to that position um, he's really kind of uh, brought them forward in terms of you know, social media and and online ticketing and um, and I know that uh, uh, Bob Silman was lauding the fact that uh, ticket sales uh, for their events last year were, were you know, set new levels, and he gave a lot of credit to Brian. So um, I'm really pleased to be able to make the appointment, um, and I hope that you will uh, give it consideration. Thank you. Councilor Adams. I, just, I think it's a terrific appointment. Certainly he's got big shoes to fill, but, but um, Mr. Foote has numerous skills, some of which you pointed out. Um, Amongst them are his strong ties to the business community, which is important because, as we know, the arts um, are a driver of, of the business community. And um, he's certainly up for the task, and I think he's a great appointment for the job. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Tayson. I'd just like to echo, uh, we'll go, get into it with Councilor Adams and also what the mayor said. I think he's a great appointment. I, I did want to just say one quick thing, and that's just in referring to the charter. Um, you may. You may need to suspend your rules as you did with those other, because I think if a, a right. tr literal reading of the charter would require this to be Refer. referred to your appointments and evaluations committee. Um, obviously, Brian's already a city employee and folks know him, and so I would also ask for that possibility because, frankly, um, he's the only one working there right now. So uh, if you don't, <laughs> Brian needs to move over so that somebody else can exactly. take over yeah. his position. Um, is there a, a, a motion to suspend rule? Uh, yes, I would like to make a motion to suspend rule 30. Second. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of suspending rules, please aye. say aye. 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 I'd accept the motion on. To approve. Well, actually, it was already moved. Uh, Councilor Adams already moved it. Sorry. So, any further discussion on this appointment? All those in favor of Brian Foote becoming the new as it actually now distinguishes department head, but director of the Arts Council, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you very much, and, and congratulations to Brian, and uh, congratulations to us, because he, he really is, he's, a, he's an asset with uh, uh, skills that we didn't even iterate here. So, so that's, uh, uh, he actually, Bob didn't know how to drive Facebook. <laughs> so, so on, on, on that simple level alone, do we Brian knows social media, systems, computers, and things like that that, that, that Bob always owned that he didn't know. Mm -hmm. And so that will be a great asset. So thank you. Yes, Your Honor. Thanks. Um, uh, okay. Now we're going to we're gonna recess the Finance Committee, and I'm figuratively or literally passing the gavel to the <laughs> chair of the Finance Committee, uh, uh, Council Murphy, so we're adjourning out of here to re we're recessing out of here, finance committee to convene. So, Mary, would you call the roll of finance, please? Murphy, here? Doyle, yes, Council here. Bars, present. Here. Excellent. And our first topic in finance is upon the recommendation of the Office of Planning and Sustainability, where is the city last contracted for low level? Um, elevation air photos in 1985 and uh, the panometric maps base maps and f uh, for that and for other different applications in 1965 making that data out of date and whereas the city uses more recent public domain high elevation photos for general mapping purposes but they lack the high resolution necessary for many applications and require more uh, expensive ground truthing and whereas consortium of local governments with support of the state regional and federal agencies is offering a group purchase with which will provide high quality photos and LIDAR remote 
sensing for highly accurate measurements at much lower cost than if contracted for individually. And whereas the resulting photos will improve the feasibility and lower the cost of a variety of municipal measurements and mapping needs, such as updating assessor maps, creating base maps for measurements of impervious area, creating street tree inventories, engaging in community land use planning, conducting transportation planning, managing conservation and watershed properties, locating and tracking public and private infrastructure, and the eventual creation of uh, contour maps. Now, therefore, it be ordered in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 40, Section 4A, the City Council authorizes the Mayor to contract with other government agencies for the creation of these maps uh, and other related imagery and mapping services. Further, the City Council author authorizes the City to accept and expand donations in support of these efforts through its tourism gift account. And I think Mr. Fiden is here to talk to us about this. Yes. I'd like to a recognize Mr. Fiden. And a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Sorry for being a bit jargony. Um, let me just talk about terms very quickly so you know what we're talking about. So an air photo is literally a photo from a plane looking down. An ortho photo is a, plane, is a photo that's corrected so it's as accurate as a map. An air, in an air photo, if the plane's here, there's a difference between when the plane is looking straight down and when it's looking at an angle. So an ortho photo corrects that so we can measure things exactly. We use these for all sorts of things from the assessor's maps to historical pieces. So when we bought the Bean Allard Farm, for example, we used historical photos from 65 to figure out exactly <coughs> where the apple trees were because that was the areas at risk of having arsenic. So we looked at the old or air photos and compare them to the newer air photos. We do that for you know a wide variety of, of things daily. Um, the old photos are enough out of date that we no longer are using them. And we're using state, if you, if you look at Google Maps these days, you'll see exactly air photos that we use. They're great, but they, they lack a lot of detail. Um, and so we spend more time doing corrections. So we're trying to update the maps to the newest technology, which is basically three inch resolution. Any questions? Councillor Tacey. Right. So you can do things to scale off of these? Do things to scale, right. Now, three dimensional? No, it's two dimensional, um, but it's, you can do it to scale. So you're still measuring. You, you can actually, we're not doing this. If you have air photos that overlap, Yep. You could look at them, so basically one eye is looking at one photo, the other eye is looking at the other photo, and you see it in 3D. But generally we're using two-dimensional uh, photos for this. So you could, like, patch them together and... Well, we, we're, they basically would be, we're going to create one seamless image of the entire city. Yep. So you can look at the city, you can zoom in. So the sort of things we get with the details, right now you see large trees, but individual small trees might get lost. Yep. And so when we're doing tree inventories, for example, something the tree committee is interested in and the CPA is interested in, we're more likely to see individual trees, which lets us do an inventory of how well the trees are, are doing. And that would work out for us for like doing forestry and, and mm -hmm. timber and cutting. That's exactly right. Both timber cutting is in watershed lands yeah. and managing trees along the road. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty exact. It's very exact, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Obviously, because of shading and because of, tree, you know, these flights are done in a leaf off condition on a blue sky day. So you do fairly well for deciduous trees, yep. but conifers, you're still not going to see the base and obviously the shading of buildings, individual buildings, you know. You and know, when see. do you expect to do this? So it'd be f it would be flown hopefully next spring. The LIDAR is a little more flexibility when it's done, but the idea is basically both will be done in the winter or spring and it takes a while to process so we would get images back December of 2014. So, so, you know, what's weird about this old state law, which you'd think would makes our life easy, which allows us to contract with other municipalities and government agencies. But in fact, if the mayor signs a contract with a for-profit business, you don't see the contracts. He's authorized to sign these. Mm -hmm. Because we're, author we're doing this as a cooperative agreement, which actually saves us money, that's why we're before you. So it's the cooperative agreement aspect of this we're asking for. So, Councillor Barge. Yes. What would be the estimated cost for this one? So we're still getting exact numbers. About $36,000, $37,000 is the total cost for both, for both pieces. It's about $1,000 per square mile, um, which is about 650 for the imagery, about 350 for the LIDAR, um, and Northampton is about 36 square miles, so roughly. So. And would this cost it will be divided. So um, DPW, uh, we're asking them for $24,000 because a lot of this is a benefit for them, clearly in terms of the stormwater issues. You know, you, you, in the ordinance before you, there's lots of discussions about exactly how much impervious area there is in places. 
this is the technology you need to do this kind of measurements. So they'd be doing 24,000. Smith College has offered $7,000 towards the process. Um, Northeast Survey has offered $1,500 because they benefit. So, and we're hoping to do more fundraising as well. And then some money will be coming from traffic mitigation because that lets us, when, we do, when we're looking at improvements, for example, for Main Street and South Street, the first thing we do is work in ortho photos and look at a general approach. And then we do more detailed survey later on. This doesn't replace surveys for detailed work, but for that first cut, when you get the community involved and think about options, it's really useful. Mm -hmm. And Councillor Dwight. Um, so this will be available eventually on the website for the public to zoom in and play around and look yes. at their backyard and stuff? Yes, absolutely. Try and spot their pets. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so what we're doing in the final version is we will overlay property lines on the ortho photos. Now, again, the thing I have to say is if you look at our property lines right now, we say in big, bold letters, you know, contains errors and discrepancies. These are not surveys. I don't want surveyors to think no, it's we just believe it. Right? It's, it's wonderful if you want to be plus or minus a few feet, but they're not surveys. Mm -hmm. uh, Councilor Tacey. This in no way has anything to do with our GPS or anything like that. Like we GPS all the height. You talked about the DPW. All our hydrants, we GPS those and things such as that. Is this... Nothing to do with that at all? Well, it's probably the imagery that you'd show that. So if you, you would probably pick up fire hydrants and GPS, and then you'd show them on these, on these images. And so it depends on what you're looking at. So, for example, a fire hydrant in a street that doesn't have street cover, you can see the fire hydrant from the imagery. Right. And so you might not have to GPS it. But a fire hydrant in a street that has street cover, you'd still have to GPS it. So they, they would work together for, for those they things. They would work together. Yeah. We, you know, we, for example, had volunteers GPSing trails in conservation areas. The better the imagery, the more you can see the trails from the sky. But you still have to get, you still have to do some yeah. GPSing. Mm -hmm. So it reduces that. So, so it's going to enhance our, our ability. Okay. Yeah, Thank absolutely. you. Mm -hmm. So do we have a motion on this? We didn't do a motion yet. I, uh, I move to recommend. Second it. Second. All right. Any more questions or discussion? Can I right. one request? I, I would like to ask for two readings on this, if possible. When we get to the main meeting. Okay. So, um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Excellent. And uh, do we w w need Mr. Fiden to stay for, do you have something else to stay for? Or? Just the next item, but I'll leave after that if it's okay. <laughs> all right. This is, this is all gift, all gifted. I don't gifted think this is not all gifted, right? Not now. all gifted. No. no, some of it is, but. All right. Well, our next item is upon the recommendation of Mayor David J. Narkowitz and the Recreation Commission, order that whereas the state legislature chapters 86 and 307 of the Acts of 1994 directed that the Commonwealth transfer what was then Parcel C to the City of Northampton for municipal purposes, including but not limited to school public safety facility or an athletic field and complex, and that's Parcel C from the former Northampton State Hospital. Whereas such transfer took place, book 5558, page 19, uh, in December of 1998, with those same restrictions and in accordance with the City Council approval of 12497. And whereas on June 13, 2009, the Recreation Commission renamed uh, and dedicated parcel C to Ray El the Ray Ellerbrook Recreation Area in honor of Ray Ellerbrook, Northampton's Recreation Director for 27 years and Look Park's Executive Director for a decade. And whereas this transfer put the land in city hands but does not ensure it is permanently protected for recreation uh, nor allow the lands to be eligible for most recreation grants. And whereas the open space recreation and multi-use plan of 2011 through 2018 adopted or endorsed by the Planning Board Recreation Committee uh, and the City Council and a total of 10 city boards recommended that the Ray Ellerbrook recreation area except for small piece on Route 66 to meet future fire substation needs should be transferred for permanent recreation use to the Recreation Commission and whereas in honor of Ray Ellerbrook who died on September 18th, 2013, the city now permanently reserves the Ray Ellerbrook Recreation Area for future generations. So now therefore it be ordered that the mayor is authorized to transfer the fee title and care and custody of the Ray Ellerbrook 
recreation area, accepting a small portion along Route 66 to the City of Northampton through its Recreation Commission for recreation purposes under the provisions of Mass General Law Chapter 45, Section 14, Northampton City Ordinance 22-60, and consistent with Article 97 of the amendments to the Massachusetts Constitution. So do we have a motion on this one? Uh, move to recommend, please. Second. Second. Okay. And the mayor is here to speak. Yes, and I also, obviously, uh, Mr. Fiden, the uh, director of the Office of Planning and St uh, Sustainability. We also have Anne-Marie Mogio, who's the recreation director, as well as Tom Parent, who's the chair of the Recreation Commission, who you actually just reappointed. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's a, it's a great honor to be able to bring this forward to you. Um, as you know, we actually... A, a memorial service uh, celebration of life was held on the rail over the field last week. Actually, it was a conversation with Mr. Fiden driving to and from that event that we talked about this uh, particular um, uh, commemoration and, and, and uh, making that field permanently in, rec in, in recreation. Uh, and so I want to thank him for, for that. And obviously, I want to thank the Rec Commission um, as well for not only for advocacy of, of rec fields, but also the work that they did on this one, including renaming it and now um, being willing to permanently manage it as a rec field. Um, when, when the land was, uh, when the disposition happened from the state hospital, you know, you see in there that there were a bunch of different purposes uh, that were given, including, you know, a school, possibly a school, et cetera. Um, but I feel fairly confident that uh, the most appropriate use for this uh, is, is a recreation field and particularly honoring our late uh, recreation director, uh, Ray Ellerbrook. Um, so I would uh, yield to my colleagues who may want to add some thoughts to it as well, may want to answer some questions that you have. So, Tom or Anne Marie. And just a quick motion to recognize, recognize Anne Marie and Tom. And Tom. Oh, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, this is something that uh, I had the pleasure five years ago, I guess it was, of calling Ray in Florida after talking to uh, Mayor Higgins when we decided to name it the Ray Ellerbrook Field. I had the pleasure of calling him to say, hey, Ray, would you like this to happen? And um, I never saw, I never, I, I had that feeling on the phone that he was choked up and Ray didn't get choked up. And uh, the other neat part, he was ha happened to be with my uncle, Jerry Booth, Jerry Booth Lett at the time, because we had the whole thing arranged. He was visiting them and we talked and and then we had the uh, official celebration and, and dedication that summer, and it was just a great event. And uh, you know, and, and Ray was a great guy. You guys that knew him, uh, one way or the other. He, if you were, if you, if he was on your side, he was on your side. And if he had to fight you, he'd fight you. And then he'd be on your side the next time if he needed. And he's a good guy to have on your side. And uh, this field is just a, uh, something that he fought for. Um, he made numbers of trips to Boston to get the grant for it. Um, which uh, um, at the time Majority Leader Nagel helped us secure and he helped the National Guard did a lot of the preliminary work and then we got the rest of it done. It gives us one uh, soccer lacrosse field and then two 60 foot diamonds that they play Little League, Cal Ripken and softball on. So it's a, it's a, it's a nice, nice parcel up there and, and we, it'd be great to have it permanently in, in Ray's memory. Any more discussion on this one? No. Councilor Tacey. Yeah, I, I just, I thank you last, uh, last minute, but I want to thank you again and everybody that had anything to do with the celebration of Ray's life, the ceremony. Very, it was extremely well attended. It was fantastic. It was a nice, nice job. So thank you guys very much. Uh, uh, just like to say that honestly, this, well, I, rarely do we have an opportunity to vote on something that makes so much sense. So, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, Director Mojo, do you have anything you want to add? We're all, we're all good. Any, any more questions from uh, anyone on this one? All right. Yes. Oh, Councilor Labarge. I would like to request two readings once it comes to the floor for City sure. Councilor. Mm -hmm. So, we have a motion on this one, correct? Yes. So, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 No folks? Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And any need for them to stay no, any longer, no. or are we all good with all of their, let like them go home? I think on this. So if you I, think, uh, I, think <laughs> we're good. I think we're good. Did you get the other one back? And uh, that one, oh, that's, that's for you. 
And then um, the one on the TIF, the mayor withdrew, correct? So we're not doing that one. Okay. So the final one is the capital, cash capital. And uh, this is upon the recommendation of Mayor David J. Narkowitz. Order that $26,200 be appropriated from the general fund FY14 cash capital account to pay for survey costs relative to professional land surveying and legal services associated with the accepting, uh, accepting several selected private ways. And you know we've been working at it for a while. So this would be, Second. this would mo uh, move to approve? Yeah. Second. Okay. And the mayor will comment on this one. Uh, yes, uh, so you may recall, well, obviously you're all familiar with the process that's been underway uh, by the Department of Public Works, working with the Board of Public Works um, to uh, go out and uh, hold hearings on the various uh, uh, streets as to whether they should be classified as public ways. Um, and you may also recall that uh, I, I requested and the council approved an earlier appropriation of some funding to underwrite that process, the survey costs, the legal costs. Um, they are now, um, obviously, as they proceed with the work, that funding um, is now fairly close to being diminished, and they are asking for this additional infusion of funds um, to complete that work. Um, and, uh, and so that's what this represents, and uh, I'd like to ask for your approval to make this, uh, this transfer from capital funds uh, to be able to allow them to get through this entire process and have this work completed. Uh, discussion? Councilor Tacey? Yeah, yeah. This is, when this process is done, this is going to provide a great sense of relief, not only for a lot of the people in these private but also for, for the taxpayers. And, and just, it's just going to be, it's going to be a huge burden off the DPW, um, and I intend to support this. Mm -hmm. uh, Councilor Adams. Do we know how much we've spent up till now? Uh, funny you should ask. I, I asked uh, Mr. Huntley that just so that I could, uh, anticipating that you may ask that. So originally we, um, we appropriated $23,800. Um, uh, uh, they've spent of that, right now sitting in the account is about $14,462.50, um, but they have about, um, about eight to ten thousand in survey bills that haven't been processed yet. So, um, so really, they're down to about four thousand, four to five, four to six thousand dollars of that funding is is left, um, and they still have. Um, let's see, they've uh, they've surveyed Cosme and Depot Avenue, Glendale. Um, they are some are in legal review because some of these need to go through the whole legal review process to be readied for acceptance. Um, obviously, uh, uh, City Council has accepted Graves Avenue and Hillcrest, um, and their, their, their plan is to have all of the field survey work done before the snow flies this okay. year, um, and then work on all the paperwork, the legal work, the you know, getting all the surveys and the stamped plans and all that done, um, and they want to have the entire street acceptance process done uh, by the spring of 2014. Um, so that's, the, that's where they are. Mm -hmm. Sh should we expect oh, this? Yeah. Should we expect this amount to cover, take us through uh, the rest of the process? Uh, the, the, uh, yes, although I would say that there's also um, they do believe that there's additional funds that will be needed, and actually um, the Board of Public Works discussed this at their meeting last week, and um, because some of these streets, as you know the main interest in the street is because of the sewer infrastructure or the water infrastructure. Um, the Board of Public Works has voted to allocate some water and sewer funds toward this project. Mm -hmm. So we may be coming to you um, to, to do a, an allocation of some of those to the project as well, because they believe that it should not only fall just to the general fund, but because um, much of their, some of, some of the streets, the main interest is, again, because they need to have right of for sewer, sewer and water, and they have infrastructure in the streets. So there, there could be additional funds as well. Uh, but I, my, my hope is that this will represent the general funds contribution to the project. Mm -hmm. Is this to the, is this, is the solicitor doing this, or is it another attorney? Uh, the okay. solicitor is, uh, the solicitor is, is working with them, yes. So we are tracking that, 
um, as part of his work um, separately toward this project. He, I mean, he tracks all of his work separately, but yes, so he has been working with them uh, to, to complete all the legal issues. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Councilor Tyson. Yeah, and, and water and sewer easements on some of these Great. private ways has generated a new wrinkle in the entire program. So. Um, I, I understand the need for the money out of, out of the enterprise funds also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Councilor Bush. Yes, um, you're talking about the surveying cost and so forth. I mean, no matter where or what you're going to survey, you never know what kind of a problem you're going to run into. It could be where you have homes on a street where there's a deed problem, and that has to be resurveyed and more work, more costs. So it's very difficult to actually put a price on what a street's going to be. Yeah, uh, but I, you know, but I concur with uh, with what Councillor Tacey said. I mean, obviously, these are things that, for whatever reason, weren't done originally, and we would have had to have paid for all this work back then, and it didn't happen. And so, it's better that we just get this done, uh, have all this sort of cleared up, so that there's a, now a clear distinction between our public streets and our private ways. Um, it'll make the DPWs. Uh, life much easier in terms of what its responsibilities are. And it will also bring us into compliance with, uh, with the state laws around this issue. Mm -hmm. So, Councilor Tacey. Yeah, and, is, and I want to applaud the Board of Public Works, the DPW, for their diligence in this. And they really have not skipped a beat. They haven't dragged their feet on this. And they have stuck right with this. And uh, I just want to, say, I want to say thank you to them. Mm -hmm. So we ready to vote on this one? Yep. OK. All in favor of Aye. recommending? Aye. Opposed? Great. Thank you. And uh, with that, a motion to move to adjourn. Adjourn finally. Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. I'm being back in regular session. And guess what's up next? All that hard work to pay off. Um, this, uh, upon the recommendation of Office of Planning and Sustainability, this is the order of. Um, the ortho maps. I don't know if you want. I'm sure you don't want me to read this again. That. Okay. I agree. I'll second that. There's, there's a motion made to approve and seconded. Uh, any further discussion? Um, roll call, please. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 I would like to suspend Rule 14. Second. There's been a motion made and seconded to suspend Rule 14, allowing for a second reading. All those in favor of suspending rules? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Move second reading. Second okay. reading's moved. Is there a second? I did. Okay. And seconded by Council LaBarge. Uh, any discussion? Roll call, please. Council Carney? Yes. Council Yes. Council LaBarge? Yes. Council Yes. Council Yes. Council yes. Yes. Next up is the authorization of transfer of the Ray Ellerbrook Recreation Fields to the Recreation Commission. Move. Approve. Move. Approve. Second. Motion made by Council Murphy, uh, seconded by Council Tacey, I guess, and that uh, any discussion? Roll call. Okay. Roll call, please. Council White? Yes. Council Bars? Yes. Murphy? Yes. Council Yes. Council Yes. 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 I'd like to make a motion to suspend Rule 14. Second. Motion's been made to suspend Rule 14, allowing for a second reading. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Move second reading. Second reading. Second. Uh, second by Council LaBarge. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Yes. 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 This is an appropriation of $26,000, $26,200 from the general fund uh, cash capital account towards surveying and legal costs associated with the private ways, which you just heard discussed about. Is there a motion? Move to approve. Second. Any further discussion on this? Roll call, please. Council Murphy? Yes. Council Schwartz? Yes. Council Yes. Council Yes. 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 Council Yes. There's no request for a second. Uh, uh, no. No. So we're good. I prefer that if, if there is no request, then we don't have to worry about that. Sure. Now we're up to 
second reading for the authorization for the mayor to file a petition for special legislation raid the uh, Lilly Library retirement exclusion. Um, I'll accept a motion. So moved. Second. Please second reading, please. Uh, and okay, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Councilor Adams wasting no time. Just waving the reading. Uh, any further discussion on this point? Mayor, you have some updates on this. I understand that uh, we got a memo from yes. Susan Wright relative to this. Uh, yes, and I believe a letter was circulated. Uh, it was to Susan Wright from the retirement board right. that just tried to address some of the questions the last time. Um, and I think the, the critical point is, um, uh, you know, the issue of uh, he points out that that um, employees enrolled in Massachusetts public retirement systems are unable to contribute to Social Security um, and he talks about that and he does talk about um, uh, the issue of being able to purchase credible service which uh, is not really feasible in this case um, so uh, and then we actually had an added wrinkle in the intervening two weeks because uh, we discovered that in the case of these two employees that they would um, uh, not have access to city health insurance if they're not on the pension system um, because those two are sort of linked under our new GIC plan. Um, so you have to be on the pension system in order to be eligible for municipal health insurance. But as it turns out, these two employees are okay with that because they have, they don't have, they have health insurance through other means. So they are, they're more concerned about this change happening uh, than not being eligible for the health insurance. So, um, so again, I just I, I'd ask for the council's support. We can send it forward to the legislature and uh, and uh, wait for the great and general court to uh, hopefully act on this. I'm sure, it'll bubble up there with the boots. Um, great and general court. That's the official name. Yeah, it's the great and general court. Is there any further discussion on this? Uh, Councilor Carney, you feel satisfied? And I, I know Councilor Freeman Daniels had some questions, but it does. No, so. I, I'm satisfied. Uh, okay. Uh, and no further discussion, then the roll call, please. Councilor Schwartz? Yes. Councilor Tracy? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Yes. All right, it's passed in second reading. Um, next up is parking prohibited at all times on Bates Street. This is also second reading. Do you want to waive reading? Please. Okay. Uh, any further discussion on this item? Move to approve. Second. Motion to approve and the second. Roll call, please. Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 That passes in second reading. Uh, North Ham this is now the North uh, to amend uh, Northampton Center for the Arts Board of Directors, and this is second reading. Uh, what, what's your motion? Second. All right, this motion made and approved in the wave of reading. Uh, any further discussion on this? Yes. 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 Next up is the parking prohibited at all times on Meadow Street. You all recall there was some discussion about the spacing of the signs and stuff, but that this actually speaks more to just establishing the parking prohibition. I'll accept the motion, put it on the floor. Move to approve. Second. Um, I'm guessing the wavering. Got it. Uh, any further discussion on this? Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Boyd? Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Martin? Yes. 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 And this is for referral. Um, the recommendation is to the License Commission. This is in order to seek special legislation to allow the issuance of an annual all alcoholic license, hotel license over quota to the Fairfield Inn and Suites on Conn Street. Move to refer to License Commission. Second. Consultation. I have a question for Mary. Was this was amended? But this was okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any other discussion relative to the referral? All those in favor of referring? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Uh, this 
is uh, an ordinance for referral uh, to regulate marijuana and ensure traffic mitigation and it includes specific project fact-based analysis. The recommendation is to refer to uh, planning board and committee on rules and ordinance and then we also heard an appeal to and the board of health to refer with a with a referral as well to the board of health to the board of health as well mm -hmm. um, how's that is that our should, list there should do it okay I'll accept the motion so referral. moved second it any discussion all those in favor please say aye aye, aye. aye. Correct. So ordinance, ordinance planning, and board of health, and board, and of, board health. of health. Number item number seven. This is uh, an ordinance to add the stormwater and flood control utility uh, ordinance. Um, recommendation is to refer to uh, the committee on rules, ordinances, and orders. I would request it also be referred to the Northampton Youth Commission. Um, and Edlu, Edlu. to request you. Yes. Any, any other thoughts on referral? I actually, I will accept a motion. We haven't. I would motion. make a motion to refer. Second. Second. Any discussion on the? Do you want to? Yeah, actually, I, I feel it's important to explain why I recommend the youth commission. Um, the youth commission, the last youth commission that was convening, um, actually participated. They had a presentation from Terry Culhane and. Jim LaRulia showed up to explain what was happening. And the reason is, this is why we established a youth commission. These people, the young people, will be paying for this. And I, I think it's very appropriate that they actually have an opportunity to weigh in on it. And more importantly, to understand what the pressures are, and what, what's actually creating the circumstances that puts us in essentially a, a, a series of Hobson's choices. And, and that's why that's why I'd like to refer to them and, and actually give the Youth Commission actually something meaty to talk about. Um, at the forum a couple of weeks ago, there was some concern that we were going to be voting on this rather quickly. So right. I'm wondering if you could describe the process that the council is going to undertake so that people have a chance to weigh in before we take our vote on this. Thank you, Councilor Adams. That's, that's, um, it is the intent of the council to have three um, public forums where we will gather information from the community because now this has moved from a recommendation from the ad hoc committee that has in turn been drafted by the Board of Public Works and also in working with the uh, the conference committee with the council and created the language is now in the council's hands to figure out and cobble the law or create the law um, or to even determine whether we're going to pass the law whether we're going to pass and, and, and move on to this and we are soliciting public opinion and comment, more public opinion and comment, and I should point out, and we will actually include eventually uh, soon a list of all the opportunities the public, the public has had to weigh in on this from the beginning. And uh, we will, and then it should also be noted the public has access to all three of the committees that we just refer, that are, we referred this to, where the public can also go, participate and speak at those meetings as well, at Ed Lou. Uh, at uh, uh, the Youth Commission and also on ordinance. So it is not being voted on tonight and it's not being voted on in the immediate future. It, this is where, this is essentially the sausage process as we say, but this is, we're having as many bites of the apple for the public to have access to the discussion as we possibly can as we try to expand our understanding of the concerns and the pressures that the community feels and also the pressures that require us to consider this. Um, so there we go. That's the longest referral discussion we've had in a long time. So uh, <laughs> Councillor Labarge and then Councillor Tacey. I want to thank you for explaining that, Council President. I think it's extremely important because I have talked to you about concerns that I have from residents about having these open public sessions. And I think, and I will say it again like I did at JFK, if you're going to do it, you do it right. And I prefer having us take our time with this than rushing it. Myself and uh, Councilor Large Adams and the uh, and Councilor Spector, who's not here this evening, have gone through this at great lengths with the DPW. And uh, 
we were pretty pretty adamant and we wanted to assure the public that there was going to be lots of public input and discussion to see whether or not this even flies um, but we have to realize one thing that whether or not anybody is has the authority to regulate stormwater we do have to realize the fact that our stormwater system is in disrepair so somewhere along the line something has to happen so but there's going to be a lot of public input and there'll be a lot of chances for the public to weigh in and um, I would hope and I was glad that you said that there will be a, a, a schedule of the times when people have already had a chance to weigh in and will have a chance to weigh in, in the future <clears throat> and I hope they realize that the first meeting that we had was so poorly attended it was I think we had eight citizens that showed up for this and this is going to be a huge impact on the entire community so uh, I hope everybody pays attention I hope everybody provides their, their input the to that end um, we're tentatively scheduling um, forms in, in Northampton schools I think we have some tentative dates but once we will announce them once we lock down but we're considering spreading these meetings out in the community so people who live who don't have not to this point felt comfortable coming downtown or attending they'll have an opportunity to speak at either JFK I think what was the other what were the other venues we had uh, the high school possibly the little theater the theater was one well we, we're, we're we're banging around trying to figure out what's the best and what's available mm -hmm. and and the idea is and actually to the point of rushing issue I know a lot of people have actually said that this feels like it's being rushed there we have said I think from the beginning and, and as we charge the Board of Public Works to make this a public process which is unprecedented at some levels so is something establishing an enterprise fund like this but we said that we will not run by deadline but at the same time that does not allow us an open-ended avoidance of a decision and we because as Councilor Tacey stressed the 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 critical threat to the system stands and only increases with deferred decisions so to that end the only pressure and it's not a pressure to rush but the only pressure is a significant one and it's for this council and eventually to understand and take responsibility after the public process to render a decision and so we're we're going to do that with the greatest extent of understanding and knowledge of what the what the constraints are so uh Councilor Kern. Uh, just um because I'm aware that this first came before the council under the previous administration and at that time we we received um, a presentation about the state of the city's uh, uh, infrastructure uh, stormwater infrastructure um, it would be really helpful for the public who may not have um, been tuned in when we when we had those presentations in front of the council and when there were um, uh, descriptions and articles written about these in the press it would be really helpful to have a synopsis of when this first came before the council that three to four years ago and then the numerous times since that just so that there's a, an understanding that this has been really pretty transparent and we've been trying to talk about this very important issue for a number of years um, yeah to that end I believe that 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 is our intent to to chronicle yes the, uh, this the process as it is in the one uh, right up to the final decision so, Councilor Tacey. and you brought up a good point about the deferred decision um, a lot of deferred maintenance has gotten us to this point so a deferred decision on top of deferred maintenance could really be yes. disastrous it is our job and as I said it's our job to make Hobson's choices and and the sausage and the sausage so the motion is to refer all those in favor aye, aye. opposed aye. okay all right now updates from the council president no <laughs> there aren't any uh they're covered is there any information requests uh, this is under charter provision 2-7 no any new business i will accept the motion to adjourn move to adjourn we'll if you hold off, we're going to adjourn just right at 8.30. No, all those in favor of adjourning, please say aye. 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 Thank you.